Welcome to the review of Minor VGA. Minor VGA was created by Harold W. Stiles and released in 1989. Your end goal is to actually marry the head of the brothel, Miss Mimi, and the way you do that is by getting her or buying her a diamond ring as well as having twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, she's a gold digger, isn't she? Well, anyway, you spend the game digging for silver, gold, platinum, and occasional diamonds. There's a nice general store in the game where you can buy equipment, and then you head down the mine shaft and start digging through the dirt. The right side of the screen shows how much money you have, the minerals you've collected, it gives you information, and also has what items you have. Here I currently have a shovel and a pickaxe. Each time you dig through the dirt it costs you a certain amount of money. Digging through sandstone is easier and costs you less money. There's also volcanic rock which costs more to dig through that. So basically you gather gold, silver, and platinum and then you head up to the surface over to the bank. And once you're in the bank you sell the minerals based on the market price. It's really cool how it has the market price fluctuate like it was in real life. You can sell your gold, silver, and platinum individually, or you can sell everything at once. You can also, again, find the occasional gemstones, which I was only able to find diamonds. You can purchase the items such as a drill or a bucket from the marketplace in order to aid you throughout the digging process. Here we just bumped into a spring which flooded part of the area with water. When that happens you can actually lose items in your inventory which is very annoying. There's also a cave-in that can occur. It causes land to fill in around you. Now what really sucks is when you fall into a spring and then you're trying to get past, especially if you don't have a pump in order to pump the water out. You can get stuck and sometimes you just have no way of getting past it. Here we're blocked by granite and we're trying to dig around the water in order to find a way around. Keep running into cave-ins and makes it very difficult, very costly. You'll notice my bank account keeps getting lower and lower. Every once in a while you can get out of those bad situations and head back up to the hospital to heal because you'll notice my health is a percentage and it's at 54 percent right now. So you can rest to get healed or sometimes you have to pay for a surgery depending on how severely injured you are. My health is at 20 percent so I can't just rest I need to do surgery for $300 but you'll notice my bank account is now negative 266. Once your bank account goes so negative, your game's over, and then you're presented with the top 10 scores. And if you did well, maybe you can be on the list. And then you're presented with this little end message saying how you did. If you buy the drill, you can drill through granite, which is great, but it's very expensive costs 150 to dig through one spot. There's also a lamp and torch you can purchase and basically what it does is it makes it easier and increases your chance of finding minerals. So you can just kind of move back and forth around certain tiles and if a gray circular blob appears it means there's something special there. And so you can keep moving around and then potentially it'll turn into a mineral or some other hazard. You can use up your torch and lamp, which is pretty cool how that happens. And you can also find special items like a four-leaf clover, which increases your luck. So here we just picked up some gold, 
and of course as I mentioned there's silver and platinum. Silver is the cheapest, gold is second, and platinum's third, just like in real life. Although lately it seems like the gold price has actually been very close or even higher than platinum, which that's an abnormality. So you can find a water pump and that helps you pump out water if you had hit a spring. One of the most useful items in the game is dynamite. You can blow up a huge area and it leaves behind tiles that have potential gold, silver, and platinum in them. If you're too close when you light the dynamite you'll actually take damage. Here it reduced their health to 1%. The elevator has a bottom limit where you can only go down so far but at the general store you can actually press the V key to purchase a enhancement on the elevator to go deeper. Also when you're at the top you can hit a special key called bottom to take you to the bottom and then it doesn't cost you anything to go into the mine and you can use the top to come out. I don't know if that's a bug or not but if you don't hit bottom you have to pay to enter the mine. Here I found some diamonds which sell for quite a bit of money. They're pretty rare and hard to find. Here we get a thousand dollars for selling them. The game does have a save game feature which is very useful because this game is very hard. You'll be dying a lot and presented with this perverted ending. Here lies a brave miner. He died with his tool in his hand for the love of sweet Miss Mimi. That's pretty clever. So again you can restore the game if you had saved it. Get back to where you were. Eventually you'll be able to enter Miss Mimi's place which you can't for quite a while. And there's some funny things you can do in here. You can of course have a brew at the bar and hear some rumors. You can stay for a night to remember, but if you're not wearing a condom, you actually get venereal disease. So you can purchase a condom, which incidentally look at the icon in the bottom right. That's a weird looking condom. But then when you have a night to remember, you don't have a disease. And if you haven't met Mimi's requirements yet, she won't marry you when you try to meet with her. There is a couple annoying things in the game. The game scrolls and rebuilds itself on the screen slowly, so you'll find yourself having to wait for that redraw process as you're flipping back and forth occasionally. And the springs can be very annoying because it can flood a whole area and then you're basically screwed. The game does have a lot of novelties, such as the outhouse, where you can feel relieved. So in closing, I'd like to say that this game was a hidden gem, pun intended. It can become quite addictive, kind of in that Tetris type feel. It's very challenging, especially when you first start off and your bank account isn't very large. The game can become a little tedious after a while, especially when you're just walking back and forth on the same tiles. But overall, it's a pretty solid game for its time. If you like grinding type games, then this is the game for you. I hope you enjoyed this review, and thanks for watching. <laughs>